the wife of my brother, the Lagos State Governor, Dr. Mrs. Ibijoke Sonwolu. My father in the Lord, and also the Chancellor of this prestigious university, Dr. Daniel Kolawali Olukoya, and his beautiful wife, Dr. Mrs. Shadi Olukoya. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Professor Akitune Ubilade. The Vice Chancellor and the Chief Celebrant of this auspicious occasion, Professor Elijah Adibuale Afolabi. I'd like to also recognize the wife of the former governor of Lagos State, Mrs. Fashola. I'd like to recognize all those who have come with me from the Gateway State, led by my Chief of Staff, Alaji Shwaib Salisu, the Honorable Commissioner for Science and Education, Professor Abayomi Aribabu, who incidentally was a former Vice Chancellor of Thai Sholari University of Education. All other members of the Ogun State Executive Council are here with me this morning. The Registrar and Secretary Council, Mr. Alufemi Emmanuel Iwale. All other Vice Chancellors and other heads of institutions members of the Board of Trustees, members of the Governing Council, Principal Officers of the University, Deans of various colleges, members of the Senate of the University, recipients of honorary degrees, graduates of today and other parents, all other eminent and distinguished guests, our distinguished gentlemen of the press, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. When the Vice Chancellor of this great university, Mountain Top University, Professor Elijah Adibuali Ayolabi, invited me to give the convocation lecture for this year a couple of weeks ago. I enthusiastically accepted that invitation without any reservation. Three reasons fueled my desire to be here. First, it affords me the opportunity to pay homage to and share the companionship, even if briefly, with the Chancellor of the University, Dr. Daniel Kolawadi Ulukoya, who is a spiritual father to me. Second, it brings to life in me the nostalgia of my visit to the prayer city for Thanksgiving after my gubernatorial victory in 2019. I was here then as governor-elect. Today, I'm here as the governor of Ogun State to the glory of the Almighty God. The third reason is that if Ogun State is the education capital of the country with the highest number of tertiary institutions, then Mountain Top University is a contributor to this enviable status of Idea State. And I am therefore proud to be associated with this university. That invitation also came with a latitude for me to choose a topic for my preference. After some reflections, I settled for 
quest for excellence the nexus of faith knowledge and resilience this was not fortuitous it was inspired by the university motto empowered to excel i was also guided by my personal and other successful people's real life experiences i am very hopeful that this would be a good occasion for us to reflect on the journey of life together before i proceed i wish to congratulate the chancellor dr Diki olukoya the board of trustees the council the vice chancellor the senate of mountain top university on this auspicious occasion of the combined second and third convocation ceremonies this event is not just a send forth for the graduates that you have molded nurtured and empowered to excel you have provided access for them to join the top stratum of the society wherever they may find themselves you have gifted them wealth that cannot depreciate mountain top university has once again significantly improved on the stock of the nation's human capital and enriched humanity as a whole with these worthy ambassadors you should be proud of these achievements to the parents of the graduates the joy of the days like this is incomparable you have made sacrifices it has pleased the almighty that your efforts have been crowned with success and your children and awards are today bringing honors to their families what can i say except paraphrase that this is the lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes the center of focus today are undoubtedly you the graduates you came in four or five years ago with anxiety and uncertainty of what your journey in university will be like you burned the proverbial candle both for prayers and for study for many of you you had the freedom for the first time freedom to attend lectures or do otherwise freedom to study or play and freedom to climb the mountain of success with the exertions required or just wander around the beautiful campus of the university obviously you choose to exercise your freedom responsibly hence you have been conferred with well-deserved certificates and honors now your anxiety then has turned to excitement and you are now more certain of what the future may hold at least you now have a compass indeed you have not only climbed the mountain successfully you are steadily standing on the top with a clear view of the environment and the opportunities that abound congratulations i hasten to add however that your journey of life has just entered a new phase fasten your seat belts i'm a firm believer in lifelong learning that transcends the four walls of a classroom or mere academic progress for me education is only complete wholesome beneficial and of great value to the individual and society only if it is grounded in moral and spiritual firmament that is why I see modern top University MTU as a unique citadel of learning it is not just a center where teaching learning and research take place like most universities it does all this and very well too but it offers much more it is a faith-based institution with a rich curriculum pedagogy an environment that offer all-round education education that provides material and spiritual fulfillment for the individual purifies and strengthens the moral fabric of the society whilst developing the human capital for nation building mtu is a mild melting point of faith knowledge and resilience i will talk about this later and the antecedents of its founders also make the topic of discourse as persuasive and compelling for me to undertake interestingly 
MTU as a faith-based university has so much in common with world you know, universities in the United States and in Great Britain. Did you know that Harvard University was actually founded in 1636 as a school to educate the clergy who are migrating to the East Coast of America? Did you also know that Yale University was established in 1701 as a collegiate school to help educate congregational ministers? Or that Princeton University was set up in 1746 by four Presbyterian gentlemen, three of whom graduated from Yale and the fourth from Harvard. According to them, our great ambition was to erect a seminary for education, educating ministers of the gospel. Brown University was also founded in 1764 by the Baptists while in England, Oxford and Cambridge have their origins in the Catholic Church and Church of England. These universities were faith-based, advancing knowledge and with resilience they have become the world's best. You graduates are fortunate to have attended Mountain Top University, the Imagine Ivy League University in Nigeria. Without making a pretense to being a member of the privileged world of academia, I thought it might be helpful in providing context if I offer some working definitions of the operative words in the topic of this lecture. Quest for excellence, the nexus of faith, knowledge, and resilience. Quest simply means pursuit, mission, hunt, search, or journey. Excellence, on the other hand, stands for distinction, perfection, leadership, peculiarity, superiority, extremely radiant quality, or to stand out or to be outstanding. Faith to me is both spiritual and physical. I know of faith in God and faith in self or man. Dictionaries portray faith as a strong belief in someone or in something. As a Christian, the Bible teaches me that faith is substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Hebrew 11 verse 1. So faith is being certain about realities we believe are true, but we can either see, touch, or feel. It is hoped for and not immediately visible to our naked eyes. This includes notions like our belief in God as the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, giver of all things, including life and good things, and even in some cases, bad things. And God as the decider of our destinies or fates. It may also mean convictions that Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit and is the Son of the living God. Faith is also about our view of our life after life the realities of hellfire and paradise. God's word also says that but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. With faith, everything is possible. Including the seemingly physically improbable things. Like the mountain moving faith, as described in Mark 11, 22 to 23, which says, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the ocean, I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. His story is knighted in the scriptures in the book of Luke of the woman with the issue of blood, whose ailment defied cure, until she exercised her faith by touching the hem of Jesus Christ's garment. Immediately she got cured. All these are at the spiritual level. Coming to secular realities, we operate by faith daily. We hold as self-evident truisms natural events like 
life and death, day and night. This is because the very understanding of faith comprised of both logic and reason, formulated from a time when the laws of nature prevailed. For example, faith is exercised when you turn on a switch and naturally electricity illuminates the bulb. Similarly, faith is exercised when you scrupulously apply yourself to your studies, like most of you have done, and diligently plan your private social life to focus on why you are in the university. All things being equal, you're coming out with a good grade, is without doubt. That's faith in self and in practical reality. Conversely, a student whose routine is to wake up late, stay almost all day fiddling with WhatsApp, Instagram, watching movies, and loves partying more than library, amongst other distractions, will definitely have failure waiting for him or her. Knowledge. Knowledge is a different ballgame. Knowledge means facts, skills, and understanding acquired through insight, research, experience, or education. It could be under apprenticeship, pupillage, or within the confines of the classrooms, workshops, research through laboratories, and symposia. Luckily, that is what you have all come to MTU to acquire. But let us get it straight. Knowledge is a mere subset of education. It is also said to be power. But any knowledge that is not applied is banal knowledge, inactive and a total waste of time and resources. So, it's a good thing to search for knowledge, to gain understanding and wisdom, and utilize the same for personal, national, or human development. One of Jesus' most significant parables regarding work is set in the context of investments, Matthew 25, 14 to 30. The rich man in the parables of the talents delegates the management of his wealth to his servants, much as investors in today's markets do. He gives five talents to the first servant, two talents to the second, one to the third. Two of the servants earn 100%, returns by trading with the funds, but the third servant hides the money in the ground and earns nothing. The rich man returns, rewards the two who made more money, but severely punishes the servant who did nothing. That is applied knowledge. Applying knowledge is profitable. Resilience. Resilience, on the other hand, is the capacity to recover from difficulties. Persistence to remain focused and undaunted towards achieving certain and predictable set goals. This can be gained through an administer of faith and knowledge. By inductive reasoning, faith, like faith, could throw up a lot of issues to dissect. While faith could dig a lot of trenches on your path, faith, on the other hand, will give you the hope, belief, or trust that you can scale or avoid trenches. Knowledge, however, will teach you how Yet resilience is what imbues in you with the attitudes and stamina that it takes time and a process for you to overcome. Such is the dynamism of all the three notions, faith, knowledge, and resilience. They interrelate in a manner that may take a great deal of introspection. Let us get more practical. All excellent people and institutions have tales to tell. These narratives are not often couched like lamb's tales from Shakespeare. These notions, faith, knowledge, and resilience are co-joined triplets. They are not fictional or sentimental doctrines. They are real. This university, for instance, started with 177 students in 2016 across 15 undergraduate programs. And through the application of this troika, faith, knowledge, and resilience. Today, it runs 27 programs up to PhD levels and has risen from ground zero six years ago to become number one among universities that are less than 10 years old in the country. 11th best, 11th best of all the nation's 170 universities. Please feel free to clap.
Thank you. You are clapping for yourself. Fifth best private university and first in terms of Google Scholar's presence throughout Nigeria, according to the latest ranking by the National Universities Commission. Indeed. If you ask the management, they will have stories that are full of turns and twists. It could never have been a tea party. Sometimes people and institutions find themselves in the valley of the shadow of death, but with trust in self and God, strict adherence to principles and theories, they navigate their way through toils and turmoil to arrive at a predetermined destination, which now makes them reference points and models. No hero finds their journey smooth. The stories of how they reach the zenith of their callings are often filled with landmines, challenges, daunting tasks, sometimes failures. But with divine guidance, hard work, conviction, and the desire becomes realizable. Like the sage, Chief Obafemi Awolo once opined, there is no pride in never falling but in rising each time we fall. So excellence is strewn with trials that turn to triumphs and tribulations that change to celebrations with faith, knowledge, and resilience. Those considered excellent today did not let their dreams down, irrespective of facing immense adversities in their careers. Most successful people in life have behind them stories of resolution, dedication, and conviction. Let us look at some of them. Many of us would have heard the story of Thomas Edison, the man who invented the electric bulb. Guess how many times he tried before being successful? History has it that he tried about a thousand times before becoming successful. One thousand times. You can imagine 999 failed attempts, and yet the man kept soldiering on. Indeed, in response to a question about his mistakes, he responded, I have not failed. I have successfully found 999 ways that it will not work. He called them practice shots. That is resilience. I also remember the story of a man we now call the father of modern de democracy, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States of America. He lost his job. He was defeated for state legislature. He failed in business. He had a nervous breakdown. He was defeated for the post of speaker. He was defeated for nomination to Congress. He was defeated for U.S. Senate. He was defeated for nomination of vice president. Defeated again for U.S.A. Senate. But guess what? Finally, he was elected as the 16th president of the United States of America. That is resilience. In the world of business, Cornell Harlan Sanders, the brain behind Kentucky Fried Chicken, comes to mind. His whole life was full of hardships. On the target at failing at every job he tried earlier on his life as a lawyer and salesman, Sanders was rejected 1,009 times before successfully selling his Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe today. KFC is everywhere. More importantly, the story, motivation, and leadership principles of our revered chancellor, Dr. D.K. Ulukoya, are worthy of mention. As one that will guide you in the journey towards excellence, he is the very personification of faith, knowledge, and resilience. Here is a man who grew up as a child of a policeman father and a trader mother. He became born again in secondary school at Methodist Boys High School, where his undying faith began. So faith started at that point in time. His encounter with one of his Indian teachers who once told him in class at Methodist Boys High School, Lagos, that, boys, if you want to escape poverty, read your book. This has kept him on his toes more than five decades later. Inspired, Dr. D.K. started studying from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. daily. No wonder he graduated as the best graduate student of his set in secondary school. 
1976, D.K.O. got admitted into the University of Lagos to study microbiology. He graduated from ELAG in 1980 with a first class degree in microbiology. Becoming, wait, 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 that's not, that's not the news. Becoming the first person to have achieved a first class in the course at that university till date. That is faith, knowledge, and resilience combined. Today, DKO is no longer an acronym for a man's name or an individual. It's a brand of excellence, faith, knowledge, and resilience. He has waded through drudgery of peasantry to become a fitting model for the topic of this lecture. I want us all to draw inspiration from his very eventful and disciplined life story. Let me revert to my personal story. This time three years ago, if I had been invited here to deliver this lecture, I would most likely have been unable to script one nor attend. Why? Because I was in the middle of a most temp tempestuous gubernatorial contest. You are all living witnesses of the grace of God in my life. It was a period that my faith, knowledge, and resilience were consistently tested. I was pilloried from pillar to post. The powers that be there in Obu State felt they could upturn the mandate and even fiercely attack the president's entourage for declaring me the authentic flag bearer of the party. Our campaign train was hounded. We were harassed. Even after winning the election, my opponents still went to many courts. I have gone through probably one of the most turbulent and vicious electoral process that any government could have gone through. I went through several pre-election cases, maybe eight, maybe ten. Then came the tribunal, court of appeal, and two Supreme Court cases. But God has continued to remain God. God proved himself that indeed with him, God, nothing shall be impossible. Throughout the trials and travels, not for once did I lose faith in both God and myself. I'm sure of the knowledge that no man can play God and God can be man, but man will never be God. By the way, my career in politics did not begin with the 2019 governorship race as was read in my citation. In fact, the botched political transition of General Sonia Abaja, I was elected as the youngest senator elect ever in this country in 1998. However, Faith truncated that journey as we were not inaugurated. But I remained undaunted. In 2002, I contested for the gubernatorial ticket and emerged the runner up in the primaries, coming second behind the eventual candidate of the party. Again, in 2015, I contested for the same senator seat, even with more experience, exposure, resources, political clout. I did not win. Again, I remain undaunted. In 2019, I again sought to serve my people. But this time, at the governorship level, to God be the glory. Today, I am speaking to you as the governor of Nigeria's gateway state. The journey was torturous. The experience was harrowing and rancorous. But then God has been faithful. This story will be better told in the future when my memoirs will be unveiled. However, it suffices to say that my faith in God and self, the knowledge and experience I've garnered over time, and my will and resilience to succeed have seen me thus far. I have relieved these real life experiences and stories to prepare you for the challenges ahead. As you go out today, faith is mere a stepping stone to the knowledge you have come to here to acquire. Residence makes the critical difference. It's obvious that some of you may not use the degrees you have acquired to become successful. Your chancellor, Dr. Lukoya, with his record-breaking first-class honors degree in microbiology from Unilag, is no longer in the laboratory looking for viruses 
and antigens. But rather, he's winning and healing souls as a world-renowned pastor. What is, critical, what is crystal clear is that it will help you if you apply the knowledge and the soft component of your search for knowledge network to succeed in life. But what do all these stories mean? The things that are peculiar to all of them. They have faith that things could be done. They continue to seek knowledge at every field attempt. They learn something. Everyone in each story excels because of their faith in God and self, and especially for seeking knowledge and being resilient in the pursuit of their dreams. Therefore, failure is not an issue it itself. Failure is not an issue itself. It is normal. But how you react to failure, that matters. And that's why the wise men say, fear has different meanings. It could be, forget everything and run, or false evidence appearing real, or face everything and rise. I have never seen anybody who forgot his dreams, ran, and still excelled. Once resilience is missing, everything is lost. Your academic certificates are the entrance qualification to the school of life. You cannot afford to stop learning. Not even in the 21st century, with the scope and spheres of education continue to change and broaden. 35 years ago, we heard of stories of how secondary school leavers are begged to take up jobs. At that time, education was but a certificate. But in today's 21st century, education is no more a certificate, but now what one must conceptualize with the fourth industrial revolution upon us and the rate at which technology is advancing, it is critical that we have a sufficiently educated and skilled workforce to be able to drive global competitiveness. I'm sorry to say that currently there is a mismatch between industry demands and the education curriculum. So our education institutions need to update their curricula to align with the direction in which the world is going. If we ignore this, our young people will have irrelevant qualifications that the society will be unable to benefit from. What all this means is that your starting point as graduates does not determine your end point. Where you start does not determine where you end. What matters is how you start. Do you believe in yourself? Do you still feel the degrees handed over to you is a one fit all route to excellence or success in life? For me, if you aim to touch the sky, at least jump. You may not be able to touch the sky, but at least you would have left the level you took off from. In the process of your journey of life, you need relationships. What kind of relationship do you keep? Do you keep friends that continue to inspire you to greatness or friends that continue to discourage you? You must know that your network is your net worth. Ralph Linton, an American sociologist who authored the study of man in 1936 and the tree of culture in 1955, once said that if every man had been left to develop by his own unaided effort, it is doubtful if anyone would have progressed beyond the Stone Age. Interesting. Linton became respected in anthropology for his definitive research on the distinction between status and role. I attest today that like an undying phoenix, the idea lives on and remains immutable. I hold this as self-evident truth that it is not always easy to identify whether an individual status is ascribed or achieved. Someone or some people must have played a role in molding the successful and not so successful people in our society. Also, be guided by the axiom of a very dependable advisor of Bill Clinton, a former president of the United States of America, by name Vernon Jordan, when he said, you are where you are today because you stand on somebody's shoulder. And wherever you are heading, you cannot get there by yourself. If you stand on the shoulders of others, you have a reciprocal responsibility to live your life so that others may stand
stand on your shoulders. It is, in, it is the quid pro quo of life. We exist temporarily through what we take, but we live forever through what we give. Then you must also appreciate the fact that the joy to greatness takes time. You must have faith, continue to seek knowledge, and stay resilient. We therefore look forward to how all of you will begin to positively impact in society. To this university in particular, as I conclude, and the entire academic world, this is also an opportunity to reflect on the fact that our world has been ravaged and significantly altered by various events, particularly recently, ranging from climate change to security challenges such as terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, and the current ranging COVID-19 pandemic. It is therefore important that our research institutions and scholars turn their attention to finding solutions to these myriad of challenges facing humanity in general. Should exercise faith, conduct research, be resilient to come up with solutions to stem this tide. Local solutions must be sought for local challenges. But for this to happen, we need to encourage and cultivate innovation amongst our youth. It is encouraging to know that there are pockets of this already taking place. We can see uptake and use of locally designed technology. Most of this needs to happen across board, covering the different sectors of our economies as well as we still lag behind the rest of the world when it comes to introducing disruptive technology. Human development is about creating opportunities and building a person's ability to innovate and be entrepreneurial. Significant investments need to go towards this. It therefore only makes sense for us to industrialize in order to be less reliant on importing products for consumption from outside the continent and the ivory towers must live up to their decisions as centers of research and excellence. Otherwise, they will be as irrelevant as the paper qualifications they turn out. The gown must work to meet the town as the cliche goes. At this point, let me commend the participation of private operators in the provision of education at all levels. This is very consistent with our public-private partnership model that we are developing in our state. The Building Our Future Together agenda of administration has five pillars with the acronym ISHAYA, I for Infrastructure, S for Social Wellbeing and Welfare, E for Education, Y for Youth Environment and Job Creation, and A for Agriculture. Education has a prominent place among these pillars. We are determined to sustain and improve on our status as the education capital of this nation. In this regard, at the inception of our decision, we declared a state of emergency in education. This has led to huge investments in infrastructure development, human capital, capacity building, welfare of personnel, as well as students at all levels of education. In particular, our interventions to improve our state's tertiary education include the approval of a sizable budget for educational intervention for development of infrastructure in state-owned institutions, rehabilitation of internet and access roads to our campuses, purchase of buses, and other necessities. In addition, we have introduced the award of scholarships for outstanding students in all Ogun State and payment of buses to all Ogun State indigenous in Nigeria tertiary institutions. For us as an administration in Ogun State, being the education capital of this country, we are in no haste to see the dividends of hosting more universities than other states in terms of finding solutions to these recurring issues. We will continue to formulate policies and implement programs that will help to aspire and achieve successes in all spheres. Our youth represent our future. We will continue to focus on their intellectual development and health improvement. That is why we are making the requisite investments in their future by providing them with tools in the areas of employability and entrepreneurship. 
We are also ready to collaborate with the private sector to recruit new hope and engender a fulfilling future for all. Through our ideas, incubation center, the tech hub, and the definitive policy under the framework of the Ogun State Digital Economy Infrastructure, we hope to meet the rest of the world in terms of information technology, which powers the 21st century economy. If the Industrial Revolution that relied on machines and manufacturing had isolated us in Africa, this ICT age defies such classifications. It is driven by knowledge and competitiveness. Our dear graduates, you all remember the story of Mark Zuckerberg, a star your generation can identify with. He has proven that leadership cannot be defined by age or experience. He is a symbol of hope, a role model, and inspiration for youth internationally. He broke the traditional barriers and dreamed big, and succeeded as the world's youngest billionaire. Such is the dynamics of his age and time. It does not matter where you start or what paper qualifications you hold, be comfortable anywhere on any positive issue. It's after all a free globalized world. You can compete fairly with your peers anywhere and bring that goodwill to rub off on your country. Our future leaders, democracy is expressive and expansive. I will enjoy you to take part in the political process and become active in determining the future of this great nation. If you leave the space for others to determine your future by sitting on the fence, the implication is that their vision may not be in tandem with your dreams. If you leave the space by sitting on the fence, the implication is their vision may not be in tandem with your dreams. Let me leave the University Authority here with a recommendation that which to ponder on on how to aid youth development and empowerment for indigents that are seeking knowledge. What I'm referring to here is the work study program as it obtains at the Ogun State Thai Shola University of Education. This program allows students to work in the university and fund their education from their wages. That's a work study program. It allows students to work in the university and fund the education for their wages. I am most gratified to inform you that the best graduating student at the last convic convocation of Taswed, by name Ogunyale Oluwaseyi, is a product of this university work study program for indigenous students. This boy, Oluwaseyi Ogunyale, could not afford to go to school. He could not afford to pay his tuition. He had to work and from his wages paid his way through and he emerged the best graduate students in Taswell. Today, Oluwashe has earned himself a job with the state government and an internship with Airtel as compensation for his faith, knowledge and resilience in his academic pursuit. Let us get this right. Do not lose any opportunity to excel. The journey has just begun. So I charge you all in the words of the renowned Dr. Taisho Larry that may your road be rough. And indeed, your roads will be rough. It will be bumpy. But your faith in God and yourself, as well as your continuous pursuit for knowledge, resilience, and network will see you through the road to success. On this note, let me thank the management, staff, Senate, Vice Chancellor, Chancellor of Mountain Top University for this great opportunity to share my thoughts with the new leaders you have trained and who I believe can change our world for better. Let me wish all of us a Merry Christmas, celebrated in moderation celebrated in moderation in view of the pandemic. I am certain
that all of us yet here are fully vaccinated. Is that a right assumption? Do I hear a yes? Are we fully vaccinated? If we are not, with the permission of the Chancellor, I will come and set up a vaccination center right here in Mountain Top. May the joys of this season be ever living in our homes in Jesus' mighty name. I also wish you an amazing year ahead. I thank you for listening to me and God bless.